Barnes came to Edinburgh to find a publisher. He took up lodgings in, um, where did he stay? Baxter's Close. Where's that? Where you're standing. You're kidding. No, would I kid about a thing like that? Baxter's Close was here, east side of Lady Stair Close. It's been knocked down, that's all. Hey, let's do the show right here. Contain yourself, Gauk. Although it does make a good show, a good story. Burns came to Edinburgh to find a publisher. That's not much of a story. There is more behind it. He was having a bit of personal di- difficulty to do with Miss Jean Armour. Jean Armour was a girl back home. Trouble was, she was a... Uh... Don't get me wrong, he did want to marry her. It was her father who wasn't so keen. And then there was the trouble with Heel and Mary. No wonder he cut and run. But he did need to find a publisher. And the Edmund Literati, who admired him so, knew nothing about the girl in question. They adored him, my dears, the ploughman's poet. They found him most attractive. Who didn't he? Oi. He hadn't meant to stay long in Edinburgh, but he was here for a year or so. And it was during his time in Edinburgh that he met another great love, Mrs Agnes McElhose. Known as Nancy. She was unhappy in her marriage, so she turned to Burns as a friend. Oh, aye. Burns couldn't make it to Nancy's house, so they started writing letters to each other. Eighty letters in three months or so. Forty-two from Robert. Which makes thirty-eight from Nancy. Oh, they could both write a good letter when they were in the mood. Uh, Dear Robert... No, that won't do. Why not? You can't be Nancy. Why not? You're not a lady. You're not even a woman. Oh, come on. They'd love to see my Nancy. That's a certain je ne sais quoi. All right, if you promise to behave. The perfect lady. Dear Robert, I'm much flattered at being a favourite of yours. Please note that both Robert's letters and Nancy's letters were written in the most elegant English style. He changed his tune for Nancy, though. And the lassie's back came got something more direct. Corn rigs and barley rigs. Corn rigs are bonny o. I'll never forget the happy night among the rigs we are o. <laughs> to thy bosom take my heart, there to throb and languish. Though despair has wrung its core, that would heal its anguish. Stop it! You made a pass at me. You fancy me. I did not. I do not. We're talking about Burns and Clorinda and their platonic love. And I'll be right. Their platonic love. Nothing else was possible. I suppose not. What would Jean be in there? And don't forget Mr. McElhose. Clorinda didn't forget. It couldn't continue. But Burns immortalised their love in many of his poems. None so famous as A Fond Kiss. A fond kiss and then we sever A farewell and then forever Deep in heart, wrung tears I'll pledge thee Warring sighs and groans I'll read thee I'll ne'er blame my partial fancy Nathan could resist my Nancy but to see her was to love her, love but her and love forever. Had we never loved so kindly, had we never loved so blindly, never met or never parted, we had never been broken hearted. <laughs> <laughs>